Today, it's the matchup that nobody's ever asked for, answering the question that no one's ever asked. We're gonna install macOS on Windows 2000 and Windows 2000 on macOS. And then we're gonna see which one is worse. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy emulating old computers on old computers and then fighting those computers together like some sort of weirdo Pokemon battle, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We've got plenty of shenanigans just like this in the pipeline, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So here we have two pretty well-matched and actually pretty interesting 90s machines. In the left corner, we have the PowerBook G3 Kanga, the very first G3 PowerBook from 1997. It's running a 250 megahertz G3 and it's maxed out at 160 megs of RAM. It was only sold for a few months as a stopgap machine between the old school PowerBooks and the newly designed PowerBook G3. So it's actually really hard to come by these days and has always been one of my grail machines to find. And since it's the fastest of those old school PowerBooks, I think it'll be pretty funny to see Windows 2000 running on this thing. And in the right corner here, we have a PC laptop that's actually pretty well matched to that PowerBook. It's a rather lovely Toshiba Satellite 4080 XCDT from 1998. And it's pretty much everything you could ever dream of in a late 90s PC laptop. I mean, just look at this thing. It's a Pentium 2 366 with 196 megs of RAM. Pretty nice keyboard and uh, two big old speakers right under the screen. USB 1.1 and a whole bunch of ports on the back, including infrared. Now you might be thinking, hey, Pentium 2 366, that's a way bigger number than G3 250. That's not a fair fight. Well, it was this very matchup that Steve Jobs himself used in the 1997 introduction of the PowerBook G3 when he compared the G3 processor to the Pentium 2, showing that the G3 was 44% faster than a similarly clocked P2 in integer performance and 15% in floating point. So let's prove him right. And uh, well, maybe prove him wrong. I don't think Steve Jobs would approve of what we're doing here today. But let's go ahead and get the wrong operating systems installed on these two glorious mid 90s powerhouses and uh, see what they can do. And if you want the right PCBs for your project, check out the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. You know what's even better than getting high quality PCBs super fast and at a great price? Getting those PCBs to your door fully assembled. PCBWay is currently running an assembly service promotion, only $30 for one to 20 pieces. PCBWay can do component sourcing, meaning turnkey boards can be at your door with as fast as 24 hour turnaround. PCBWay is a big part of our community and a longtime supporter of this channel. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. Okay, let's start with the Toshiba because from the little bit of playing around that I've done, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna work great. We're using Sheepshaver 2.3 to install Mac OS 9.0 and uh, we're gonna do it off of real Mac OS 9 install media, which is, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Now, originally I wanted to do this on Windows ME and install Mac OS 9.0 because, you know, haha, Windows ME sucks. But turns out Windows ME does suck and I was not able to get anything to install. I got 8.1 to kind of boot, but yeah, Windows 2000 lets us use Sheep Shaver and uh, there's even a version of Sheep Shaver on Macintosh Garden that's pretty much all set up to go. Just download it and you can run it. And I'll of course link that down in the description below in case you wanna try these shenanigans yourself. But since this is already pretty much configured, all I have to do is create a drive. And yeah, we can use our built-in CD-ROM here, which is drive G on this machine. And I can even mount <laughs> other drives in the Mac. So if I wanted to put a USB here, I can pop the USB stick in the Toshiba and mount that drive in the Mac, I think. But for now, we'll leave this off, but the CD-ROM drive on 
And yeah, check it out. <laughs> All right, Mac OS 9 going in the hole. And yeah, found it. Sheep Shaver pulls the optical drive so it sees the new disc inserted and it boots off of it. Although that, uh, that box came down a little bit slowly. Maybe not the best sign, but I'm sure it's fine. This is gonna be great. I'll tell you, this LCD in this Toshiba, it's really nice. All right, uh, oh, mouse cursor is a little laggy. Then it's pretty weird to control a Mac with a little pointer nub. Kind of wish this had a trackpad. But yeah, let's name this hard drive. Toshibintosh. Toshibintosh. And we'll let that install. It says estimated time remaining about 15 minutes. I think that's probably optimistic. So yeah, we'll jump cut to when that's done. All right, you know what? Full screen like this, this is a pretty convincing Mac OS 9 install. And honestly, not too laggy. I mean, eh, it's a little laggy, but yeah, nothing like it was during the install process. Okay, let's see what kind of Mac we're dealing with here. So about this computer, yeah, Mac OS 9, 64 megs of RAM. Again, pretty surreal seeing that on a Toshiba satellite. And Apple System Profiler. Not exactly the fastest thing to load, but it's trying. All right, for some reason it thinks we have a PowerPC G4 running at 100 megahertz in a Power Mac 9500. <laughs> Well, that's certainly a combination of things, but hey, it's working. Let's see if we can change the wallpaper here. Here we go. Good old UFO 2. Perfection. All right, we successfully have Mac OS 9 running pretty much painlessly on top of Windows 2000 on this Toshiba. Let's do the reverse and put Windows 2000 over top of Mac OS 9 on this beautiful Kanga G3 PowerBook. So you don't really actually have to do much of anything to get this working on Mac because the Macintosh Garden has an image of Virtual PC 4.0 which comes with Windows 2000's installer and you just have to run the install and uh, once you do, you'll have an out of the box working copy of Windows 2000. Well, that certainly feels like Windows, all right. <laughs> Windows 2000 professional. Straight off the bat, after using that Toshiba, I really appreciate how beautiful the screen is on this PowerBook. It is bright, crisp, sharp, and uh, yeah, the whites are white, the blues are blue, except in the corner here, which is a little bit dim, but other than that, it looks awesome. And uh, very glad to have a trackpad back. And this cursor is mighty fluid. <laughs> All right, so I'll cut this down in editing, but <laughs> this took a good two minutes to get to the desktop here. Ooh, lagging a little bit. But here we are, Windows 2000 Professional. Oh, we're still loading stuff. <laughs> Getting started. Certainly not fast. But it is drawing the entire window as you drag it, as opposed to Mac OS 9, which is just showing the outline. So you could probably speed this up a little bit by making it comparable. But yeah, we're in Windows 2000. All right, we've got our two victims <laughs> all set up and struggling with the wrong operating systems running through emulation. And uh, yeah, just from dragging windows around, they seem kind of comparable. I might have to give an edge to the PowerBook. It does seem to be running Windows 2000 a little bit better than Sheep Shaver is running 
Mac OS 9 on Windows 2000. Wow, this is really confusing. Anyway, how are we gonna test these two machines against one another? Are we gonna use some sort of fancy benchmarking software? No, absolutely not. We're gonna use Dark Forces, which has a Macintosh and a Windows version. And we're gonna see if we can install from optical media into the emulation environments as if they were real computers. And uh, yeah, let's play some games. Okay, first up, let's install the Windows version of Dark Forces on the Mac. And uh, I think we have to do some rigmarole to actually eject the CD-ROM. Hold, oh, it's just Command-Y. Take out my virtual PC disk. And Dark Forces for PC. And I have it set, actually it's set by default to use the CD-ROM drive, so I'm hoping this just works. Go into my computer. It's a bit slow. <laughs> oh yeah, look, there's the CD-ROM. Oh yeah, there's Dark Forces, all right. Install. Okay, well, it took its sweet time, but uh, yeah, we're in the installer. I think it's working. Okay, I think we're done. Let's see if we can launch Dark Forces. Hey, look at that. We are running a game on Windows on top of Mac that they also made directly for Mac. So a little bit of a roundabout, but it seems to be working. Although I don't think there's any sound. Yeah, that's Dark Forces. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. And, uh, of course, I have to use the controls built into the computer here. So I have this stupid, all the arrow keys in a line going on here. So it's impossible to play. But, you know, these frame rates... This is honestly way better than I thought it would be. How do I shoot? Die, you imperial scum. Oh, crap. Sound would be nice. Well, I love how this game just like aims for you. You don't have to be anywhere near shooting on target. And you'll hit them. Yeah, this is shockingly playable. I, <laughs> I thought this would be a, an absolute slideshow, but it's not. Back to our lovely Toshiba satellite in Tosh, and uh, yeah, the Mac version of Dark Forces. Yeah, let's do Dark Forces large install to the hard drive. All right, it's a little goofy, but it does work. Oh no, don't touch the, the mouse cursor. Oh no, I've just made it go crazy. Oh, I've ruined it by touching the track point. Right, actually, the frame rate on this is pretty similar to what it was on the Mac. Oh, until you get close to these people. All right, not great. Okay, so dragging windows around and playing cool games is a lot of fun, but I know what you want to do. I think we're on the same wavelength here. You want to know if we can go one level deeper. Can we run Mac OS on Windows 2000 inside of Mac OS? And can we run Windows 2000 inside of Mac OS inside of Windows 2000? Let's find out. We're going to go another level deeper. Okay, let's see if we can install Windows 2000 in Virtual PC 4 inside of Mac OS 9 inside of Windows 2000. <laughs> Here we go. 
All right, well, Sheep Shaver on Windows 2000 stopped working. So uh, <laughs> I guess that answer is that question. A Toshiba Satellite 4080 running Windows 2000 makes a terrible Macintosh. Let's try the PowerBook. All right, let's start Sheep Shaver Mac OS 9 inside of Windows 2000 inside of Mac OS 9. I'm sure this is going to be great. All right, and I guess we better put the uh, Mac OS 9 CD in there. And we'll say boot from the CD. <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> start. Okay, well, I don't think that <laughs> Sheep Shaver likes to run inside of Windows 2000 inside of Sheep Shaver either. So, uh, huh, that's disappointing. Okay, so I've been trying for like two hours to get Sheep Shaver to run Mac OS 9 inside of Virtual PC Windows 2000 inside of Mac OS 9. And, uh, yeah, it just quits with a kind of a non-descriptive error. So I don't know what's wrong with it. Maybe it just has to do with the memory or what? I don't know. But <laughs> I think I'm just going to go ahead and say that running a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine inside of a very old computer is going to make that computer kind of grumpy. And the Toshiba, I don't know what the heck went wrong. It just stopped booting up Mac OS 9 in Sheep Shaver and I get just a, a nondescriptive error. It just says program error. It'll write an error log, but it never writes that error log. So yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that either. So I feel like we've learned a lesson here today and that lesson might be just run old operating systems on the computers that they were meant for, unless you're in for a world of hurt, in which case go ahead, run virtual PC, run Sheep Shaver. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I had a lot of fun playing with this stuff, but that'll do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh inside of PC, inside of Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to B Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Briggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Ruck K Mods, John Malman, Nano, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.